Investment offered through Stratus Wealth Advisors, LLC, a registered investment advisor. Stratus Wealth Advisors, LLC, and True North Wealth Partners are separate entities. The opinions voiced in this material are for general information only and are not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual. All performance referenced is historical and is no guarantee of future results. True North Wealth Partners and Stratus Wealth Advisors do not make any guarantee or other promise as to any results that may be obtained from this. Investing involves risk, including loss of principal, and no strategy assures success or protects against loss. Vantage Point with True North Wealth Partners is for our clients and those wanting to learn more about what's really going on within the markets and economy, as well as overall financial planning topics. Hey everybody, welcome to Vantage Point with True North Wealth Partners. Today is Wednesday, July 26th, and um, Eric Susi here hosting our 36th episode, three years we've been doing this. <laughs> so uh, thank you for listening to us over the three years. Hopefully you find this information useful. Uh, we'd like to educate, share with you facts as best we can to keep things uh, current as because uh, this is our fast changing economies and markets for sure. So uh, be sure you hit that like subscribe button. So automatically as it comes up, you will get these notifications on a monthly basis that are produced. Um, so with that, with that said, we will get into it. And um, basically just a lot of visuals today. So uh, sort of bear with me as we go through some of them. You know, we're just going to point out there's some you know, good things, bad things within the economy. Um, so one thing I've been watching, you know, every month on uh, weekly, but you know, when we do the monthly podcast is the ASA staffing index. So we get this, um, report from first trust. One of our vendors tracks all the different charts and what have you. So what I, what I found here is a big dip. So this is a temporary staffing. It's gone down. So that's a leading indicator for more slowness to come in the overall economy. So parts of the economy, you hear the rolling recession. Yes, parts are in a recession. Other parts are not. So it's just a rolling recession as certain uh, economic indicators and indices and components are and some are not. So this is one that uh, is a, a you know, canary in the coal mines. That's why I always watch this. Uh, re weekly retail sales, again, the lowest are, um, uh, in, you know, since the, the pandemic there in 2020. So again, sales are, have been hurting, declining. Not it's all. Not everything's bad news. Um, you know, uh, you know, box office receipts are up, hotel occupancies up, TSA uh, up big. People are flying. It's incredible. The you know the uh, the leisure commercial flights. It's the highest here um, of, of all I've never seen. So it's of all the four past years, it's the highest for commercial um, uh, global commercial flights. Um, so, you know, some things are good. Some things are bad. You know, it's still tonnage has come down. That's not good. It's the lowest since the, the pandemic rail traffic cars. It's the lowest since the pandemic. So again, that's that ebb and flow, the, the tug and pull of the overall economic indicator. So some things are good. Some things are not so good. Yeah. And we're all watching it all. Another thing is cash. So <laughs> with the Fed raising rates, and again, today is Fed Day. So it happened uh, to have done this on uh, Fed Pal spoke today, raised rates another quarter basis point, what we was anticipating and baked into the markets anyways. So it's between five and a quarter and 5.5%. Uh, the Fed rate is the highest now since 2001. It's 5.5, you know, it's the highest rate there since 2001, over 22 years there, about 22 years. So um, you know, things are getting expensive. Uh, well, you know, when you have debt to carry that load and the government carrying their trillions of dollars and, uh, 32 plus trillion in debt and growing, um, immensely. So the good news is interesting cash. So this is again from first trust or one of our vendors that we use. So the cash, you can see this chart has just immensely uh, Jack went straight up here. So, um, uh, with that, it's at uh, basically $5.5 trillion in cash as of July 5th, 2023, $5.5 trillion. Um, in March of this year is $5.2 trillion. So basically people are just piling in the cash because rates are getting, you know, decent rates in money markets right now. So, um, 
that and CDs. We've been doing a ton of CDs. You've heard me say this for the past, you know, almost a year now. <laughs> um, so uh, CD rates are, you know, a six month CD rates about 5.4 ish in that range. So, you, you know, it's phenomenal with that. So I just want to point people are, um, you know, playing cautious, uh, you know, tucking some of their nest eggs. Yes. You want to be in the markets invested, allocated, diversified, but also, you know, nothing wrong with cash at these yields. Treasuries, like we've been using treasuries, are you know, yielding 4 to 5% as well. So um, just things to consider. Now, this is from Liz Ann Saunders from Charles Schwab's Chief Investment Strategist. So with that, uh, this is an article that came out on July 14th from her. Uh, but basically, it's a nice summary. That's why I just want to read this to you here, if you don't mind. So over the first five months of the year, the 10 largest stocks of the S&P 500 generated more than 100% of the gauges near 10% gains. So meaning um, those 10 largest stocks uh, pushed out basically 100% of the S&P 500 gains, which were nearly 10% at the time. Um, but what's interesting after that, the first five months, um, meaning though, uh, the other 490 components, meaning companies, remember S&P 500 is 500 companies, so the 10 companies are you know, basically holding up the index up until now. The other 490 companies were a net performance drag. Incredible. So basically didn't add much alpha or return. So with that said, however, since June 1st, she writes, uh, the so-called S&P 490, meaning the other stocks that were a drag, have now accounted for the majority of the index's 7% return since June 1st. All that means is the, the, the market rally we've seen the past you know, almost month and a half, two months here, it's broadening out. So finally, we're getting the market's participation to broaden out, which is a good thing. So that's good. Um, but um, we'll see if it lasts. So uh, I just want to point that out. So early on, 10 companies were holding up the index. That has now abated. And now the other companies are now uh, participating in the, uh, in the rally. So interesting little stat there. Just wanted to you know, make sense of that for you all. Um, some things also to consider is basically, this is, came from uh, a Swan Global Investments. It's just, a, um, I get information that part of our, our partners too. So, you know, you, you've heard us talk about this. The GDP is comprised basically of 70% of consumer consumption spending. So 70% of GDP is consumer spending. So uh, things that uh, are, are getting, you know, consumer credit card debts topped over $1 trillion now. It's a record high. Interest rates have spiked. Uh, delinquencies and defaults are at all-time high. Um, or excuse me, uh, beginning to rise, excuse me. Um, Equifax on this report here um, reports that 56.9% increase in non-mortgage consumer debt write-offs since March of, um, uh, March of 2023 versus March of 2022. So year over year, you have almost a 57% increase in, in non-mortgage consumer debt write-offs. So people are just filing bankruptcies, writing off. So this is, these are the 11 components that make up the, um, uh, the index, uh, the S&P 500 index. These are 11 indices. But you can see a lot of them are still dragging. Only a few are, are, are green. But with that being said, it's just interesting how, um, you know, there's still a lot of headwinds out there and cross currents. So rising debt levels, sticky inflation, you know, uh, no more helicopter money per se. <laughs> the, the Fed was throwing out the money, M2 money supply. Um, so a mix in recession, uh, you know, roll, rolling recession, plus the uh, layoffs are finally starting to increase some. Earnings are slowing down uh, across the overall indexes. So things to consider. That's why we're still cautiously optimistic about, uh, you know, uh, this year. However, um, moving to another vendor that we use, um, uh, this chart was from Bloomberg. So Bloomberg chart, basically uh, FOMO fear of missing out, uh, but they still remain skeptical since the probability of recession is still unchanged and it's elevated at 65%. So basically a lot of folks are still in the camp of this rolling recession getting worse and spreading out um, over between now and the back half of the year and heading into 2024. So um, with that being said, again, just a quick little visual for this. Uh, again, risk of recession still elevated at 65%. So I just wanted to point that out from uh, different vendors. 
Moving on to Hedgeye. So you know Hedgeye is uh, what uh, I use primarily. Uh, plenty of calls, information I'm on on a daily basis. This is a little scary. So millennials are the uh, basically ages 25 to 40. Okay, millennials. Gen Z is younger than that, obviously. So Gen Z is younger. Uh, millennials are age 25 to 40. When you combine this, those two cohorts, those age groups, um, basically 70% of Gen Z and millennials are now living paycheck to paycheck, 70%. With greater than 50% of that 70% are still somewhat or very financially dependent on parents helping them out. So this chart shows that. So this is Gen Z. You can see how much they are hurting. They are living paycheck to paycheck. This is the millennial living paycheck to paycheck. You take that, combine it, and that's how you get to over 70%. And then 50% of the 70 is still reliant by the parents helping out. So that's not good, folks. For you know, it's not like the the older generation, the baby boomers, where they hold you know the majority of the wealth uh, and the transfer of wealth that will occur too over the next you know, 10, 20 years. But uh, the upshot is when you get to Gen Z and millennials, that will um, that, that speaks volumes. Uh, so just be aware of that. These are this little subcurrent things that aren't being discussed out there in, in the news and the public. Um, consumer uh, debt level, uh, basically bankruptcies, you know, it's about 5.9% right now. So with this chart, you'll see bankruptcies have spiked up from the low at 5.9%. Okay, that's the highest going back to um, 2010. Okay, it's the highest since 2010. Uh, also, credit card delinquencies, uh, by ages, this is going back to ages in the 30s. If you're in the 30s, that's the orange line. I know it's hard to see, excuse me, but uh, uh, again, spiked up. All right here, all these lines increase. This is all delinquencies we're talking about. This is credit card debt now. People are delinquent on their credit cards. Tw ages broken down by ages in the 20s, in the 30s, et cetera. Spike straight up. So when you have over a trillion dollars in, in credit card debt and the average national interest rates 22% now and Actually, just raise rates again, so it'll go higher. <laughs> um, so uh, it's 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 crazy. That's it's it's not a good thing. This is why Hedge Eye has been talking about the conversion, the um, convergence of all these things coming together in the back half of 2023. That's why we're cautiously optimistic, but we have a lot of cautionary tales out there. A lot of caution built into the portfolios. Uh, yes. Yeah, I know uh, overall portfolios, yes, we're dragging a little bit compared to the appropriate benchmark early on the first half of the year, but the year's not out. In the back half of the year, we anticipate more uh, road, uh, stumbles and roadblocks to uh, pop up and occur. So uh, with that said, we're built for that uh, and model-wise. And again, the second half of this year, it's all going to come uh, to a head here. Thus, <laughs> again, Bill Rich, He's the uh, hedge eye drawler, makes these cartoons. I love it. Says it all. Plenty of warning flags, yellow flags, what have you. Uh, everyone's still you know, drinking the Kool-Aid, FOMO, fear of missing out. That's what's been going on the past two months. Uh, but uh, we're cautionary, optimistic. So uh, just want to point some things out that you're not hearing in the news, <laughs> per se. Um, with that said, I'm going to just sort of transition to tips of the month. This is uh, going to basically, you know, People reached out to us, you know, Andy, Jim, uh, Piccolo, uh, Eric, Biddle, Russ, myself. We spoke here the past week or two and just got together and said, hey, guys, what are we hearing? It's basically clients climbing the wall of worry. That's, what, that's the common theme. Hey, what's going on? How about this and this? So we're inundated as far as just, you know, hey, okay, markets are going this way, but they're seeing too, you know, real life. It's tough out there. <laughs> So we hear you. We understand that. That's why we're just putting together information for you that we're acknowledging it uh, and providing it to you in a different way, educational way, that, again, you're not seeing or hearing necessarily on, on Wall Street and, and news. Uh, they get paid for manipulating the markets, a zero-day expiration option. That's a big thing. So um, I actually was uh, together with Mike Green, uh, Tier 1 Alpha, uh, about a month and a half ago, going through all that. And uh, had a little sit down with him personally. So uh, he's now part of uh, their firm has a joint venture with a hedge eye and providing information to us. So that's why I've been following volatility, the VIX, 
zero days of options expiration. Um, that has now changed the markets. And that's why people are just, the markets go up in one day and they can unwind it and make their number. They push, it's just a, it's a, it's just a, a frenzy, a reading frenzy uh, to hit uh, the SPY call volumes, pushing the markets around and manipulating them for whatever time period they want to manipulate it. So the game has changed and uh, we all have changed and adapted as well. So I'm just giving you a heads up on, on that. But now tips of the month. Let's get into uh, part two of uh, tips of the month is a PSA, a public service announcement. So, all right, folks, I'm going to throw a little bit of information. Nathan, our producer, is going to put up a website. It is the energychoice.ohio.gov, energychoice.ohio.gov. So please go to that website. Whether you're an AEP consumer or Ohio Edison consumer, um, what have you, just whoever your electric utility provider is, um, I got a notice <laughs> uh, last month that, oh, my electric rates doubled. So here is my electric bill. Okay, it's huge. <laughs> um, so with that said, uh, my rate was 5.9 cents per kilowatt hour, 5.9 cents. When I got my bill last month, it jumped to 12.24 cents. So it more than doubled, okay? 5.9 to 12.24 cents per kilowatt per hour. Um, next month, when I get my next bill, it's supposed to go to 12.39 cents per kilowatt per hour. So with that said, and AEP is mentioned too, rates in general have all are going higher. But with that said, you can go to that website and uh, scroll, query, filter out what you want to do to find a different supplier. So um, I'll just sort of walk you through it if you don't mind, bear with me. Um, so you go to that website, you're going to come up with a filter and it's going to look like Energy Choice Ohio. And then you can filter on what you want. On the left side here, I want 36 months. Uh, I want no fees, no termination, no monthly fees. Um, I want 36 months. The longest you can go is 36 months, which is three years. Um, and this, by doing the filter, it queried back, okay, here are your choices. And then the one I went with was right here, the Public Power LLC out of Texas. That's the one I went with. And the reason I did that, because they're going to lock it in at 6.4 cents per kilowatt hour versus that 12 point. A three nine that it will be <laughs> so basically cut it in half pretty much and i locked in for 36 months i don't have to worry about this for three years no fees no termination no nothing so um you know i have ohio edison in delaware county so ohio edison's my you know, main provider per se uh but the service who deli you know the service uh, for the electricity will be from this public power so i urge you to please look at your electric bills Go to that website, uh, query it up. It's not that hard. It takes 10 minutes at most. The hardest part, the FYI, they try to trick you, is your, um, your customer number. It's not your number on the top of the statement per se. It is the number uh, really tucked in. It's like a 20-digit number down there. So you want to go use the long 20-digit number one. That's what you put in. That pulls up your current address. Uh, you pick your rate, lock it in. You will get a confirmation letter. I got my letter in the mail, came to me this week. It says, hey, thanks for the change. Uh, my next meter reading is going to be August 5th. And at that time, I will be under um, public power. So I did all that, basically. Um, what's the date on that? I'm looking for a date. No date. But my point is, I... Did all this, made the change, took me, what, 15 minutes or so? 719. So I did this on 719. Today is a 26. And I got the letter in the mail, you know, two days ago <laughs> on the 20th. So you can get all this wrapped up within 10 days. We're good to go for your next meeting, uh, meter reading. So please uh, look into that. Just try to save you some money. It's ridiculous um, what's going on with electric rates. And gas. You can also check out gas. That's a whole separate issue. But at least I wanted to make reference to the electricity companies and rates are all going higher, so please check into that to save you some money. Uh, part three, on tips of the month are average cars. So the average car duration now, you can see um, the average car is 13.6 years. The trucks, 
are 11.8, and then the average together is 12.5. So your cars, trucks, and the average together. The good news is people are keeping their cars longer. They're more durable. Engines last 150,000 to 200,000 miles now. So, and, you know, higher prices. Again, this all comes from um, Hedgeye. Uh, this is uh, Neil Howe, the demographicer who handles all this. He's phenomenal on demographics and stuff. Um, he's wrote here, 24%. Um, new car prices have increased about 24% since the beginning of the pandemic. <laughs> Interest rates for new uh, have raised for car loans around 7% APR. And like I said, the quality of cars are, are better and the average uh, engine life is a, a lot higher too. Um, one other thing, it's uh, part four of tips of the month, is this demographics again, just going for this, Neil Howe published this on seven, uh, July 18th. This is a great graph. It summarizes basically... Uh, how the average confidence in the Americans across the country are just pretty much fed up and at all-time lows for nine different major uh, institutions measured by the Gallup poll. This is going back from 1979 through 2023. Gallup poll has been doing this institute, measuring nine different components. From there, you can see almost 50% going all the way down to 26%. Um, to no surprise, <laughs> uh, so the weakest is about currently 8% on Congress. Congress is always the, the worst. So basically our politics and our so-called leadership and lack thereof. So um, just want to point that out. So um, policies do matter and uh, elections do, do, uh, do mean a lot. So please uh, be open to that. Um, be aware of all that because the direction we're going is not good. And that's my opinion. <laughs> So with that said, we'll end on charts. So with charts, a few charts here. Here we go. And uh, hopefully you enjoy this. It just crystallizes things for you. So this is uh, basically the stock market, the P-E ratio for the S&P 500. Currently, uh, it's at 19.8. Let's just call it 20. So after today, it's about 20 on the uh, P-E ratio. Historic average is 15.6. The, the, tech, the tech bubble back in the year 2000 is 24.5. So we're getting elevated and lofty again. Markets got ahead of themselves. Bond market volatility, that's the VIX. So the bond market volatility is the equivalent of the VIX of volatility for equities. So this is the bond market volatility against current readings, 113. It was over 200. COVID hit 164. Currently, it's 113. The average, though, is 84. So still elevated. The bond market, having worked at T-Row Price in the fixed income department there in the trading pits, uh, the bond market tells you everything you need to know. So please, uh, that's why we're cautiously optimistic uh, because there's still a lot of yellow flags out there. Stock market volatility, the VIX, we talked about that. It's near low, 13.9. It's eerie calm. So this is uh, the green bucket. Remember, green's below 20. The chops between 20 and 30. Anything above 30 is the F. So you can't uh, make money per se. So right now, the VIX is below the average. is 18.6. And right now, it's 13.9. That's, uh, again eerie low. This is first trust. This is, um, this is the S&P 500 daily volatilities. So it's a number of days with a greater than 1% moves within the S&P 500. The average is 66. And right now, currently here today, we have, you know, we have 41. So 41 moves of the S&P 500 with 1% or more movements within the S&P index. 41 times thus far, the average is 66 times per year. Last year, we hit 122 times, just to put things in perspective. And then pullbacks. Again, eerie, eerie calm. This reminds me of uh, going back to 2021, when we only had one pullback of 5% in the S&P 500. So an average pullbacks is 4.6 times. So this is called five times a year. You have a pullback of 5% in the S&P 500 index, on average, almost five times a year. We've had only one so far this year, but remember, the year is not out. Federal Reserve balance sheets. So this is some good news. So you can see the debt, just M2 money supply, just piling up that debt. So the Federal Reserve uh, basically crested over $9 trillion, uh, basically. And now it curved back down. Then we had the bank failures a couple months back. Then that uh, money supply, the, the, the liquidity from the Fed, the, the bank's access, access, the liquidity that the Fed gave. That's why I see a little spike up there. And then right now it's come back down to 8.3 trillion. So that's good. Basically, the Fed is just letting um, um, uh, the assets just flow off. 
letting them mature. They are not buying them again. So that's what's good. Uh, it also acts like a, a mini rate increase too, So, uh, uh, which is a headwind to the markets. They have that, the Fed balance sheet runoff, plus the Fed raising rates working against the overall economy as things slow down. <laughs> so that's why we're cautious. S&P 500 earnings growth rate, this speaks volumes again. The average historical growth rate for the S&P 500 earnings growth rate on average is 7.8%. And as of July 25th, it's negative 1.7%. So again, straight down decline. Um, things aren't as beautiful as I call it putting lipstick on a pig. So uh, you have to watch out for that. And again, look under the covers and find the potholes. And that's why you have us here at True North Wealth Partners is to help navigate around the bends, curves, watch out for those potholes and keep it real with you. That's what we like to do is educate as best we can. LEI, this is leading economic indicators. Um, LEI basically is a minus 7.8. That's in the red and the far right red going down. So it's negative 7.8% leading economic indicators. Things are slowing. And then you have the two-year, 10-year spread. So this is an overlap. There's two in one chart here. So the two-year, 10-year spread, it's basically it's point. 9.4, but this is called almost a percent spread difference. So when you have a negative two 10-year spread and leading economic indicators negative, pretty much it's 100% of the time you're, you're in a recession or will be in a recession soon. So and these gray charts, as you can see, the gray columns show that as well. <clears throat> so again, a lot of cautionary flags are pointing that. Payroll gains, this is what the Fed wants to do is slow down uh, Obviously, the, the payroll, uh, excuse me, the, uh, um, the overall work, workforce. Uh, so you can see the downtrend. So it is declining. The latest was 209,000. And I believe the last one that just got reported was under 200,000. So, um, or, or right near there. But my point is, they're, um, it's slowing, going in a direction that the Fed wants to see. They want to slow down the economy to help get you know, tape down inflation. So inflation still. Still there. We talk about that in the CPI, Consumer Price Index. So yes, the headline uh, CPI has come down dramatically from over 9% down to 3%. That's just good. So yes, that's good. It's coming down. But core is what the, um, um, you know, the uh, Fed really focuses in on. And the next chart on the PCE is really talks about that. But anyways, going back to this one. So the core is still at 4.8%. Core excludes food and energy. You know, they do that because they track it. They want to separate out because they want to separate the keep it less volatile. Uh, that's why they separate that out to keep food and energy, um, which is volatile, separated from the overall CPI index. And we'll end on the PCE inflation. This is the golden nugget here at the Fed track. So they follow the PCE. The next one's coming out this Friday. Um, their goal is to have 2% core PCE. And right now it's 4.6% for the core PCE, 4.6, they want to get it to two. So that's why the Fed raised today. That's why the Fed's probably going to raise again. Um, there's three more rate hikes, folks, uh, between now and the end of the year. So on um, uh, September uh, 2nd, there's one, and November 1st, there's one, and then on December 13th, which is my brother's birthday. Happy birthday, Mark, on December 13th. <laughs> Anyways, so um, three more uh, Fed meetings. Of those three, I do anticipate one more rate hike. And uh, after that, they're going to just hold it and uh, no rate cuts till next year at the earliest, first quarter. Uh, but uh, we'll see how it all shakes out. So with that said, uh, yes, we appreciate you. Uh, on behalf of the whole team here at True North Wealth Partners, just like to provide this informational on behalf of everyone. Uh, please reach out to us. We're here for you. Any questions, concerns, want to schedule a webinar review meeting, in-person uh, in review meeting, phone call review meeting, whatever. We're here for you. We like to provide our information. You're getting a lot of great information on a daily, weekly basis. Um, obviously, the podcast and stuff coming from all of your advisors. Again, we are your coaches. We're here to assist you. Bounce things off us at any time. And enjoy your summer. And we'll see you next time. Thank you. You can reach this episode on our website at mytruenorthwp.com, by other podcast venue sites, or by calling us at 614-929-2715.
Also, feel free to share this episode with friends and family and sign up for our weekly email market updates via our website. Special thanks to our producer, Nathan, as we will be producing these episodes on a monthly basis. Investment offered through Stratus Wealth Advisors, LLC, a registered investment advisor. Stratus Wealth Advisors, LLC, and True North Wealth Partners are separate entities. The opinions voiced in this material are for general information only and are not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual. All performance referenced is historical and is no guarantee of future results. True North Wealth Partners and Stratus Wealth Advisors do not make any guarantee or other promise as to any results that may be obtained from this. Investing involves risk, including loss of principal.